paying off a bunch of debt a lot of times it doesn't have anything to do with where you work or what you do or how much money you make it's really all a mindset everything in your head it's you deciding that i want to be debt free i'm going to do everything it takes to do that last day of April so of course we have to recap the month talk about everything that we have gotten done this month some things were very hard to do but we got it done another month done another month closer to being mortgage free with how fast this year has been going with tomorrow being the first day of May if you have not already realized how fast time goes and how fast time can get away from you take this as a sign the interest on whatever debt you have is accruing rapidly it's getting charged so fast the bank does not wait to charge that interest so you should not wait to begin to make a plan to pay it off if that's something that you want to actually do maybe you're happy with whatever you're doing and that's perfectly fine but if you're someone who has any type of drive any type of hope within yourself to pay off any type of debt start today do not wait because if interest is not enough to get you started, just think about how free you would be without that payment coming out of your bank account every month. That's money that could be in your account rather than giving it back to the bank. So that's really the best advice I can give anyone who's just starting is start today, whether it's $25 or $100. It's better than nothing and it gets you that much closer. So April was a busy month for us, busy in terms of our money and where it went. We still stayed at home majority of the time. And this month we paid $4,575 to our mortgage. Approximately $60 of that was from cashback bonus that we received from our credit card. That's from buying things that we were already going to purchase. And we paid that balance off of course in full by the end of the month. Our balance on our mortgage went from 134,662 to 130,424. Would have loved to get to the 120s this month, but that is perfectly fine. I am good with reaching it in May. Another thing we did, you guys know if you already saw that video, but we officially brought our 30 year mortgage down to a 15. So that's super exciting. Anytime we can get any closer and just see that progress, it's super motivating. The breakdown of our payments for the month of April, approximately $336 went to interest and about $4,238 went to principal. So you all know another goal that we've had this year is trying to replace our couch. So the couch that you all may have saw me on in the last video, I don't think I mentioned it, but that couch is the couch that we've had for six years now. We brought that from our apartment that we were living in prior to living in this house. And that couch is sitting in our loft right now. And the main couch that we've complained about so much, the couch that we bought when we bought this house. So we just got it in 2020 and it's already just in terrible condition. So just wanted to differentiate the two of those, but the couch that we are saving towards replacing is the couch that is in our living room. The one that we just bought in 2020 and we plan to have a lot more save at this point towards the couch but that's okay so in the month of april we were able to save 450 dollars towards the couch that now has us at a grand total of a thousand dollars even yay we're getting there a little bit at a time um we're getting there so like we said in the beginning our goal was 4,000 by July. That's not going to happen just straight up. Though now we're pretty much just gonna take what we can get. I think that once we get to maybe 3,000, then maybe 33, 35, <laughs> then we'll be ready to buy it. And of course, we'll definitely document that whole journey, how much it costs, everything, and make sure that we do a video on that as well. So as far as money made in the month of April, one of my side hustles is delivering food, Uber Eats, DoorDash. This month was a good month. I made $226.07. I worked three separate days, but one of those days I really didn't work that much. I probably made like $30 that one day. So most of it was made the other two days. I work typically doing this twice a month. What I do is that whenever I, since we don't live in a big city, whenever I have an errand to run in a bigger city, that's typically when I do it. Just stay in the area, work during that time, 
make as much money as I can and then go home. The best time that I notice is gonna be evening, whether that's Friday, Saturday, or Sunday night. So that's typically when I try, I've started to try to make the appointments <laughs> so I can be in the area. I'm super grateful for it. It's fun, I enjoy doing it and making over $200 um, just by going out two times, that's good for me. Oh, I know I mentioned $60 in cash back so we earned in the month of April on credit cards. As far as interest on our high yield savings account, this month we earned a total of $64.90. Do expect that to go down in the month of May because we paid so much towards taxes that we're gonna talk about later on in this video. With our balance going down, of course, it's not going to be accumulating as much interest, which is fine. That's not the reason why we save money. Just saying, moving forward in May, we expect that to go down a little bit. So as you all know, if you've been watching our channel, we eat out twice a month. I'm gonna let, start letting you guys know how much money we spend eating out every month. I think that's a good way to put it into perspective. So go ahead and comment down below. Let us know how much money you spent eating out in the month of April. If you don't know, try to make a guess with eating out twice a month. If anyone cares, the first time we had Chipotle, second time we had Papa John's, I try to change it up. I don't know if I'm going with Papa John's again because I was a little, it was a little underwhelming. Anyway, total $48.45 is what we spent eating out in the month of April. $48.45, that's not bad compared to this video right here where we spent almost $500 eating out in one month. So we've come a long way. That was just about six months ago. So $48.45, that's not bad. Yes, we are a family of four, but we have small kids who don't seem to really know the difference and they don't really like what we usually choose to get to eat. Maybe our youngest, we start eating out for our milestones that we reach. That's when we're gonna start definitely including the kids, letting them get whatever they want as well, just cause it's gonna be such a splurge day and they definitely are gonna have to participate in that too. So another big thing, as you guys know, in April was our oven catastrophe. Um, in total, we ended up spending $540 to repair the oven. So far, so good, no issues since then, everything is looking good, but it was definitely a big chunk of money that could have gone towards something else, like saving money, trying to get ahead with that, anything, but I'm not gonna complain. I'm thankful that we had the money to pay towards the oven at all. So just thankful that the money was there. And I know we also told you about our dishwasher catastrophe in the same month. Um, luckily, after giving everything a lot of TLC, we did not have to spend any money to repair anything, didn't have to buy any new parts. Everything seems to be back to normal with the oven. So I'm super thankful for that because everything was happening back to back and we didn't want to spend any more money on any more repairs. But I will say that's why savings is so important. We would love to, after paying off this house, just have a lot of money, spend probably at least the first 18 months to two years just beefing up our savings account, saving as much as we can towards emergencies like this or house repairs, like appliance repairs, having to replace something. You never know what can come up. Also medical bills. I'd love to have our entire deductible with our insurance saved up. Um, yes, we have an emergency fund that we did have to take from a little bit with this. We're trying to build it up right now as much as we can. But with being on a mortgage-free journey, we are not trying to take from savings too much and we are, our main focus is the mortgage. So someday after paying off this house, that's another why that I have just being completely at peace if something comes up knowing that the money is already there to pay for it. So I can't wait until we get to that point in our lives of just having that money sitting there, not having to worry about where it's gonna come from or messing up any of our other goals in order to get it done, basically. Our biggest accomplishment in April, I would say myself, was paying off all of our taxes that we owed. Majority of it was at least $4,400 that we found out we owed to the IRS for the 2022 tax year. The rest of it was just things that we expected somewhat was just like state, local taxes, things like that. But we didn't find out we owed this money until late January, basically February to the IRS. So we, by the time April came around, so early April, we had the money completely there. So some good news is like I had spoke about before is that I did win an award at work. This award, it's basically someone who goes above and beyond, above whatever you're really required to do 
um, at my job. So it has to be, someone has to nominate you or multiple people actually have to nominate you for this award. It's once a quarter. There's multiple benefits of winning it, not only just knowing that, you know, your peers feel so highly of you to nominate you. That was a great feeling, just seeing what everyone had to say about me um, and how I've helped them in different ways. So I definitely appreciate that. I think that enough just made me feel super happy and proud. Um, but not only that, they do give you a $250 for winning. That came in handy, you guys already know. I was so happy about that. They also gave us a half day off work. We got to celebrate by going in the building, which I haven't like been in the building for over maybe 10 minutes in three years. So that was, that was interesting getting to see, you know, people I haven't seen in a long time. And then on top of that, they let us go out to David Buster's. They paid for our meal, which y'all know, I was super happy about that with eating out twice a month. Sometimes when you do get to eat out, especially for free, you're just like, oh, it's a new appreciation basically. They have games and things like that at Dave & Buster's, which someone had said to me, maybe you could save that and go out with your kids later on. So definitely thought, you know what, that's a good idea. I'm gonna actually do that since there's just a card that's fully loaded up with games that they can end up playing. And then someone else said, you could have mine too. So just super thankful for that. I just felt like, wow, good things just are coming to me right now. So I was super thankful for the hat. This person talked about how they have a great child who lives out of state. They have no way to really use it anyway. So I was super thankful for that. Everything that happened in April, a lot of learning lessons um, overall, but that's good. While we are in a mortgage-free journey, there's so much extra that goes into it. So I definitely wanted to expand on as much as I could because there's so much extra, as you guys know, that goes into our financial journey and everything that we're trying to do and accomplish for ourselves. So plans for May. One thing that we found out within a year of living in this house was that the only thing that's powered by gas in our home is our heat. So of course, during the summertime, we're not using heat. And I found out pretty quickly that our gas company charges us, was charging us at least $35. Now it's more like 40 each month, even if we're not using any of the services. What I began doing about a year ago was getting our service temporarily disconnected with our gas company. That way they're not charging us anything. Um, you do have to pay a small fee to have it reconnected once you're ready to turn it back on. So once it gets cold again, but the cost of that is about 50% of what we would pay if we kept our services on and kept paying for nothing, basically. <laughs> so definitely gonna do that. If you're someone who also has any type of utility service that you only use for a portion of the year, definitely call and inquire because when I called to complain about it, that's the option that they gave me. Of course, I had to wait a while. Once I found out, it was already getting close to fall and winter. So last year was the first year we did it. It was successful and I'm glad we saved that money and it's nice getting one less utility bill um, in your email to pay every month. So definitely look into that if you're someone who also has something like that. Other plans for May is a little bit of self-care. I'm super excited that this first week of May, I'm actually off of work, taking time off the full first week of May, which I try to do at least every eight weeks throughout the year, and I just pre-plan that. So this week I'm off. I am gonna be catching up on a lot of cleaning, watching some TV, which I usually really just don't have time to do during the week unless I'm watching like basketball with my husband. This year I've actually really gotten into it. I don't know what's come over me, but overall um, the playoffs are going on right now. So I, I am excited to watch that. I'm able to stay up a little bit more than I usually would be able to. Not only that, other shows we want to watch together or just watch on my own and just relax. So super excited. It's great for my mental health, um, just getting a little bit of time off to myself. It's also feeling much needed right now. Just with things going on at work, we're kind of in this transition period with moving my team to new leadership and it's been it's been a lot so i feel like this is perfect timing right now with taking this time off right now i really feel like i need it so thankful for this just so happened to be scheduled for this week another bit of self-care haven't got my hair done since january like in a salon so i scheduled that for may um sometime in may super excited to get that done for the last two weeks i did do 20 hours of overtime so some of that money is going to go towards that. Considered a pre-planned expense in our world. So 
having that money already there right on time i'm gonna put that money aside save it for my hair appointment so it's already there 20 hours overtime that is more than i usually would do so i am excited for the extra money that we can put away but with being off this week that means no overtime this week so when i go back the following week i'm gonna have to squeeze in 10 hours as much as i can pretty much during that week just so by the time that second paycheck comes in May, I want to have the same amount of money that I typically would have. So hopefully doing that extra amount of overtime that week evens everything out. So that's my plan. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> so that is the month of April. Last thing I do want to just end this on a note of it never being too late to change your mindset. Um, one question that we do get a lot, mostly on Instagram, is just how we do it. What do we do? A lot of people ask like what me and my husband do whenever they find out how much we're paying to our mortgage. But I do just want to remind people that paying off a bunch of debt, a lot of times it doesn't have anything to do with where you work or what you do or how much money you make. It's really all a mindset, everything in your head. It's you deciding that I want to be debt free. I'm gonna do everything it takes to do that. If you really feel strongly about becoming debt free and deciding that that's what you want to do, you wanna have more money at your disposal to use for whatever you may want to use. I think that a lot of times people really need to get out of the mindset of thinking that if someone's able to continuously and consistently pay extra money on their mortgage that we automatically think that they must make a ton of money or they're a doctor or a lawyer. I feel that me and my husband, we're just average people. I think that we're regular people, but I also want to just remind anyone that if someone is consistently making moves with their money that is increasing their net worth and decreasing their debt amount, it doesn't mean that they just have a ton of money. It's also consistency and it's discipline. It starts with your budget and what you spend and writing it all down, putting it all down on paper. So if you decide that you want to be mortgage free in 15 years, even though you have a 30 year mortgage, you can do that. 15 years is such a long time to come up with the amount of money you need to get that done. First step, if I'm in that situation, is finding a mortgage cal calculator online, finding out, okay, how much extra money do I need to Put towards my mortgage every single month in order to pay it off in this amount of time play with that calculator you know adjust things here adjust things there it's really just making a plan and it's really just deciding in your head that you're not going to let anything step in the way of your goal and where you want to be so i'm going to leave you all right here on that note thank you again for watching please subscribe if you haven't already and we will see you in our next one Bye.